And there's something I left out today. I was going to talk about that for at least 10 minutes, how wonderful it was. Again, again because of what you're saying. In a, go, a way, I should have said it when I was making the point about why people send their... Why do something that... And again, this is not meant to be in any way negative. It's as positive as I can possibly... But isn't it crazy to have kids up on a stage talking Manx and doing a play when... It, it makes no sense in one sense, but it makes perfect sense... It makes perfect sense, not because people are doing it because they see a job at the end of it. They're doing it because it means something to them. It means something that their kids are up, you know, in a school, a bun school in this case. And, and that is a powerful resource. It's a powerful resource in terms of the relationship between the parents and the school, in, in terms of the, the children in years to come. I saw it with my own students at undergraduate level, how in many ways... The younger the people they are, the younger people are, the more likely they are to go away in many ways. And not, you know, but they will come back, and they will come back. Some of them may not leave, but they will come back. Hopefully, if you give them the kind of background that I saw in the Bun Skull last, or, you know, that I see in a Bun Skull, and I saw in the Irish medium education this year, what happens as a result of it is, as they enter the world, the globalized world, whether whether physically by traveling or working overseas, this thing that I talked about earlier about their own sense of their own place and what's unique and distinctive and special is constantly in their mind almost and that you're far more likely in, if, if people go through that process of education they're far more likely to come back or never go or set up a company here because it's not that you're cocooning them and sort of protecting them from the outside world you're allowing them but you've given them the foundation and it's, the, it's having a powerful foundation that allows them in a way to, to, to take something from anywhere when you have a strong enough foundation, what it is, it generates that sort of thing I call earlier ingenuity or the sense, the link between identity and this, a sense of wholeness and how things are all interconnected. Shouldn't let me talk, I go on. <laughs> but I had to make that point because I said I'd talk about the Bun School. Those two books, this one was launched by the former Taoiseach in Ireland, Brian Cowan, and this one was launched by the present Taoiseach in 2013, Enda Kenny. Now, uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, Brian Cowan told me that he read half of it, or he half read it, which could mean he <laughs> only did this, but and that he was going to implement some of the ideas. And just as, you know, we need to be. Uh, and and the Kenny had a speechwriter and and kind of had it all marked out and all this, but none, neither of the two really took it on board and whatever. And I find it very difficult myself. And yet, when I've given talks, and I only did one last week now to one where there was people from Enterprise Ireland, which is the kind of sort of group in charge of um, indigenous industry. I mean, they agree at an individual level. They actually agree. Like you said, now, there's nothing they said, there's nothing there that new to anybody in this room, probably. There's nothing, most people would say, yeah, it's kind of, I see. And yet, when they, it's like what I used to see in academic gatherings at academic council. I used to say, you'd meet one person, and as an individual here, she was very reasonable, and we had a nice chat. Then they go into a gathering, and they become this different creature. And policymakers, I think, are like, they need to talk the big talk about smart science and economy. And, and it's not that I'm again that. As you can see, I'm, I'm saying it's central to it. But... It's almost like our brains, our kids' brains, are you know, are too small to handle this complexity, this sort of thing that, like I remember one time when I was running a degree in Irish, that degree I mentioned, I also had a company that was doing things in financial markets or a simulated dealing room. I remember meeting somebody who, from the IDA, which is the kind of foreign direct investment company, and he couldn't get into his head that like, he said, yeah, but you're running a degree in Irish. Like, here was somebody who was charged with foreign direct investment, but he couldn't kind of, I think, understand that there was no inconsistency. I was, I mean, I look very sophisticated, but I was modern and sophisticated. I was up to date. I kind of understood what the world was about. But like, there was no inconsistency. I was running a degree in Irish. I kind of didn't see what the problem was. I think a lot of those people are afraid almost that if they allow this way of thinking that they'll end up somehow, you know, it'll come up. And yet, it's dreadful, I think, that they, like whether it's in Ireland or in the Isle of Man, I think, I think countries like ours should be going this direct. This is our future, I believe. I mean, there's too many, 
I spent many years, 20, 15, 20 years you living in New York and everybody wants to be like Soho or Greenwich Village or Silicon Valley and they constantly are they're looking for cities. They want to be like them because we're going to be the next Silicon Valley or we're going to be the next this dynamic creative. And the reason we titled this book Capitalizing Competing on Difference, you do not compete on sameness. You compete on being different. People want difference. That's what they want in tourism, anybody who deals with tourism. They want to hear, they want to see language, they want to see difference. I see constantly people at home talking about, yeah, but foreigners won't understand. Tourists will, will get lost if you put up signs. You know, like, yeah, well, tourists want to be lost, kind of, when they're, you know, yeah, don't, you know, don't they? They want to discover. They want, that's what they want. They want to be different. They, they want a hot shower, <laughs> and then they want to be left alone to discover. And more and more, that's what, the market is for countries like this. I believe it's people who, have, who can go anywhere in the world. They happen to come to one place and what they want is something they can't get anywhere else. It is, and if that paradigm shift could occur, if that shift, I'm telling you, it would. That's why I always hope that somebody like, as I said now, the reason we got the Taoiseach or the Prime Minister is to, you're hoping at, at the launch or something, the person would say, gosh, I get it, I'm going to do this. And, and, but the problem, I suppose, is, and I have to be realistic, and I'm, is, is also long-term versus short-term. I mean, policy, pol politicians, eh, anyway, are, tend to be short-term, you know. And again, it's not that they're bad people. They're, they're like all of us, they have their good and bad points. But they tend to see the next election, the next few years, being able to, at home, being able to announce 300 jobs from a, from a multinational, even if the jobs aren't that wonderful, is far better than nurturing the kind of thing I'm talking about. And we are in, in Ireland, in terms of indigenous industry, we really are not very successful. We've all these multinationals, but the reason we have an independent state of some sort is, I say some sort because I'm not sure how independent it is anymore with all this bankruptcy in Europe and all that, but like, it's because you wanted to be able to determine your own future. And, 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 the, and the number of sort of indigenous companies that are globally successful or, you know, compared to European, it's probably one half or one third in terms of the number per head and how many of them are in manufacturing is very small and all this. So I think it has a lot to do with, with that kind of short term, long term, that if you're really looking out for, the, if you have long term vision for a country, you're thinking about your kids and their kids after them and, and way in the future and you're thinking of a vision and you want, and, and it's that, I think, is lacking that if, if they really thought that way, they would do the stuff. And it's linked to your second point, which is about the risk. I, the reason I'm now on the margins of the universities that I'm in is because at one stage I was mainstream and my view of quality, for example, went against the orthodoxy. I used to not believe in exams. Um, it seemed to go against their, like that the way you test students, how good they are, the quality of them was somehow you gave them questions and you forced them to hop over and perform up to that level and hop over that. And if they weren't, you didn't give them a high mark. Now I'm realistic too. I know some students are lazy or they take advantage or they're free riders or whatever it is, but by and large, 99% of young people are all people are good. And if you, if you go for the good, you'll, you'll get far more out of it. You will have a few people who, who do damage. I used to always believe that the way you do quality and the way you evaluate students is that you don't put the focus on what you're asking them to do. You create an environment where the students themselves think it's not good enough for me. I'm setting the standard. That is the mindset at the end. They come up with that. They come up with this idea that, you know, I'm putting that, I'm going to put on, and you, I always am astounded when students, I saw it at the Bun School last night in a way, the same way. When you give students freedom, and you give them a bit of magic happens. And it happens because you have no control over it. You don't know what's going to happen, but you're relying on them. You're trusting them. And in a way, that's what's at the heart of what I'm talking about. Create that environment of trust. And most people will thrive. And we, because if you're afraid, what you do is you control. You try and make sure that you know, everything is ticked off and properly. And, but you won't develop the creative edge that we're trying to talk about tonight. You will only do that if you're prepared to be risky. And, but you must believe in something too. And the reason we're going back to Manx is so valuable. I think it is, it is at the heart of what I'm talking about because I found in the past when I've dealt with people, I constantly am involved or asked to be involved in enterprise centers or 
innovation centers or creative this and creative that and a lot of times it's based on a view that if you put a bunch of people in a room or in a building and they all are kind of a lot of them seem very nerdy to me but they work on computers and do and somehow out of it magic happens I don't think it happens a lot, I think chaos happens a lot of time because nobody believes in anything, it doesn't stand for anything if you stand for something, like I always, always say to my student, that company I mentioned earlier, Zamino uh, it came out of a fourth year class that I ran myself and when the students would come in and I had my lecturers sitting around and the, one of the lecturers became the chief executive and I became the chairman um, and what we would say to the students is they would work on these fourth year projects and I would, we would say to them, okay Where's the value here? Who's getting the value? How, we would talk about the value of something. They would have to internalize what was valuable and what they would have to be constantly sort of evaluating this thing that I'm talking about tonight. But it, we stood for something. We stood for this thing about, I, I don't like to use the word ethics and morality, but in a way, the language, I see it as an ethical issue, a moral issue. Um, I think we have a responsibility to things. And if you do things as a country here, you do things to protect and nurture and foster, for example, Manx. Not because in itself there's jobs. It's not because you're unrealistic, there will be jobs. But you do it because it's the right thing to do as a human being. You have responsibility to the past and you have responsibility to the future. And in the, in the green world I talk about, that I teach myself, what's very obvious is, is what I said earlier, companies that succeed and countries that will succeed will be the countries that have that, that have that way of thinking. That's the key to it, being able to sort of somehow think that way. And yet it is risky and it's almost too much. <laughs> because when, yeah, that company I mentioned earlier, I couldn't afford it. And most people couldn't afford it. But I think the lesson from it, though, is n I'm, not, I'm also not saying we should all be making sweaters. You know what I mean? We should be making things, you know, other things than sweaters. Um, we don't have to sell them at 400 or 500 euros a, a whack because the people who buy that in that particular the reason I'm giving that example is it's so for Irish people especially but people here I think would understand it as well that I mean there's no clothing companies left in Ireland they've all gone to the wall or gone overseas and, and because you can't afford to be producing things when it's based on mass production and here's a company that's surviving 15 miles off the coast in 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 a hugely competitive market fashion against Italian fashion companies how the hell do they do it like they do it because in a way uh, it's because it's a universal thing they're selling I mean uh, somebody said to me should the Chinese or the Japanese or wherever they're selling these sweaters should they don't know anything about this island off the coast speaking Irish just like they would possibly say about yourselves if I can say that now I said yeah I, I agree they don't but they, they do know about themselves. There's a universal theme. There's a universal thing about people in a society, in Japan in this case, or China. There's a common thing about tradition and heritage and sacrifice and understanding there are people who are making things with their hands or making, and that's common. You know, people all over the world, and if they see countries, in this case, this country, doing something that is special and unique and and rooted in some way in the place itself. They may not buy 500 euro sweaters, but you can, you can do other things. There's other things that, I mean, the reason I put in the food and other examples is that that same view, I think is true. If people know what is that thing I called earlier, that, that intangible, that thing that is so valuable, um, they want it. They want that authenticity. It doesn't have to be that fancy. This is a fancy, real example. I think there are, I think it's, I'm going to screw up a word. I said earlier today the, that sometimes at a talk, you, there's a word comes into your head and you say, can I actually pronounce that properly? If not, don't say it. And I'm now coming up with one. Replicability. Replicate. I'm not sure how replicable it is to be doing other things based on the kind of thing I'm talking about. But I think... I think the lesson is that you go after that. What you don't do is, I mean, for this country, for example, which is in a sense, and again, it would be wrong of me to say I know about the economy here, but, but I mean, it, a lot of it is based on financial services and, and on, on certain things like that. And I think to move on to the, move from that, which is, 
is policymakers trying to sort of reinvent or move or know that that world is a kind of a world that is fraught with danger? I think it is to go this way, but you don't have to go that extreme. What you have to do is you have to believe in something and be prepared to sacrifice for that and show people that you're prepared to sacrifice and that you are willing to not have everything measured in money terms, but believe and, and stand for that.